Okay, today we're heading down to Washington State. We're gonna be going to a logging conference, do a little networking, and I gotta do a big public speaking presentation to over 200 different logging contractors. I'm a bit nervous about the public speaking, I'll be honest. I've only really done public speaking maybe once, twice before, so, and this is one of the bigger events. So Rainier has asked Edison Motors to come down there and they want me to give a, about a 30 to 60 minute presentation to all these contractors about what electric and hybrid electric trucks can do in the forestry industry, kind of a little bit of an educational piece, which should be fun. And the other part is I'm excited. It's part of growing a business is you gotta be able to do this networking stuff. It's something that I'm a little rusty on. I don't do a lot of networking. I've always just been a log truck guy by myself. So it's something I'm out of my element on, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it goes well. We talk to some people, get some people interested in buying a truck, maybe sell a truck down to Washington State which would be fantastic. We, I still would love to get at least one US customer on the next five trucks so we can deal with that uh, process, bringing it down there, but. All right, so some of these goals we gotta work on on this one is I really wanna work on my public speaking. I think like as a CEO of Edison Motors, I'm probably gonna be doing a lot more of these speaking presentations, so I'd really like to improve this. This is gonna be a great opportunity. I'd like to improve my networking skills Fundamentally, I'm a truck driver, and it's a lot different talking to a camera here than it is talking to people live time. So I'm gonna work on that networking skills, try and remember people's names, that sort of things. I guess we gotta head down to Washington. We got about an eight hour drive ahead of us, so we better get going. I'm bringing Theron behind the camera. Honestly, I do not know how people drive in this kind of traffic every single day. Like, coming from a small town, I would lose my mind if I had to live in a city and deal with this every single day. Like, we've been in this for 30 minutes and we are barely, barely moving. Like, five, 10 kilometers an hour. Oh, there's an ambulance coming. So Chase's mom's car has auto cruise control, which is pretty a nice feature. It brakes and accelerates in traffic for you. Yeah, this car is this car is wicked good. Like, big shout out to my mom for letting me borrow her car. If you're gonna be in traffic jam down in Seattle, it's it's a nice car to well, it's a nice car all around. But that's a cool feature to have. The Edison truck is not gonna have this. We are not that sophisticated. nighttime we are still stuck in this same traffic jam it's taken four hours to do a hundred kilometers this is ridiculous this is insane I've never seen traffic like this in my life America please for the love of God invest in some good public transit get some trains some high-speed rail some tr commuter lines anything to avoid this we made it we made it that was a long, long drive. So today is the day. I'm gonna, we have our presentation. I'm gonna go wake up Chase in his room, or collect him, and uh, hopefully this goes well. Housekeeping. How are you feeling this morning? I'm a little nervous about this. I, uh, I'm a big fan of these social events, and I'm extremely nervous about speaking in front of them. I don't even know how big this thing is. Could just be 10 people, could be 100. Pretty sure the email said 200 people. Yeah, I'm not trying to focus on that. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Maybe only 10 people show up. Maybe only 10 people. That kind of leads to my next question was, are you doing, what do you do to prepare or to get over it? Do you just get up there and just wing it? Yes, 100%. I'm just going to wing this one. And I mean, not only just your presentation, but like this anxiety for the speaking. Is there anything you think about or... Well, no. I try not to think about how nervous I am. Oh. <laughs> and, and not that there's... There's only 10 people, right? Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. We'll just wing this and go. 
see how it turns out in the end. Chase Barber uh, started out as a truck driver over a decade of experience. He and his partner Eric Little started their own company hauling and installing electrical generation and hybrid power equipment. Edison Motors was built out of, with the idea of combining their hybrid power systems with their love and experience in the trucking industry. Guess I'm here to talk about electric trucks. I really, really like the hybrid approach. I don't believe that full electric is ever going to work in the logging industry for a lot of years. You would need about three megawatts of batteries to get a logging truck through the day. That would be about 60,000 pounds of batteries. If you just took logging trucks, even if you could figure out battery technology, getting three megawatts on a truck where it was weight effective, you wouldn't be able to actually charge those trucks. If you just look at BC, Sorry, I only know BC, I don't know Washington too much, but you look at BC, there's 5,000 logging trucks in the province. Three megawatts per truck, two and a half megawatts per use is 12 and a half gigawatts of power. Site C Dam, which is being built for the last 15 years at a cost of $25 billion, only puts out 1.1 gigawatts of capacity. You would need something like 10 Site C Dams. You would have to flood 800 kilometers of land and you would cost something like a half a trillion dollars to build that power infrastructure just to meet the power demands of electric logging trucks. But with hybrid, you don't have to worry about it. You can still reduce your fuel consumption by 50%. It's running at one RPM, so it's better emissions profile, less fuel burn, and you don't have to worry about finding a charging station way out in the middle of the bush. For 15 years, I've been hauling logs in British Columbia. So when we built this truck, we looked at the old trucks, the old Pacifics, the Hays, the stuff we were running and using and we looked how they were built and I looked at electric trucks on the market and I didn't think that there was a single electric truck being built that could handle logging. I still don't think it is. So we realized if we wanted a logging truck that was going to be electric, we'd have to build our own. This was the first truck we did. This is our first kind of electric truck we ever made. This is a 1962 Kenworth LW923. Like I said, I was, ah, uh, oh, can't play the videos, of, but I, it, this is the videos of it driving. I guess we can't play them, but uh, it does work. It does drive. I'll take my word for it. <laughs> I'll be honest. A big shout out to Kevin who made this presentation. Uh, I got a grade nine student that made this presentation for his class to show what Edison Motors did, and I'm not above copying unpaid child labor and just using theirs. <laughs> because it's hybrid, you don't need a lot of batteries, which means that there's not a lot of weight. In fact, with it came to weight savings, we actually reduced weight. From that, doing the retrofit on that 1962, it weighed nine tons before we started. It was 8.8 .8 tons when we were done. So we lost 200 kgs worth of weight, 400 some odd pounds. Cool thing back here is that the power on this truck is insane with electric. It's why freight trains and heavy equipment go electric, is that the pure power. Uh, this truck's putting out over a thousand horsepower and something around a hundred thousand, yeah, 102,000 foot pounds of torque. Just electric motors are insane. This thing, we put 100,000 pounds on it and it moved 100,000 pounds like it was nothing. We got a video and I wish I could have shown the video, but we got a video where I'm loaded with 100,000 pounds and it still spun the wheels taken off. To go into the stats and the power output, which is really insane, like I say, over 1,000 horsepower, 102,000 foot-pounds of torque, the regenerative power, and that's what's really, really impressive for logging. So on a jake brake, you have about 60% of your uh, output power is hold back. So if you have a 600 horsepower truck, you're actually only holding back for the next 15 around 400 horsepower. With the this, with the regen, you still have six, 600 horsepower of hold back coming down, which means that you can come out of a lot steeper grades holding back at a higher speed, which means that you can get away with not using chains, you can get away with pulling a heavier adverse coming out of a steeper condition. The axles are actually rated um, 39 tons, that's on the drive, so you can load 86,000 pounds directly on the drive axles with these electric motors. The entire system runs off of high voltage, 580, and the battery options, uh, you have about 280 kilowatts. Because it's a hybrid, you only need a third of what a fully electric truck actually weighs. 
or uses. Electric motors are incredibly, incredibly reliable. You don't have drive lines that you can shock load. You don't have things that you're gonna blow out. It's literally just a direct contact. It's a standard ring and pinion with straight cut gears so that you can hold back just as heavy as you can go forward. It's directly coupled to those gears. Uh, and you can fine tune it for any kind of like traction control. We really don't mess around a ton, but it knows if one axle is slipping or going because it's speeding faster than the other and it'll adjust power automatically. So it's, it's actually pretty cool that way. And it works essentially, it's not an automatic because there's really no gears. There's nothing that shifts, it's just direct power, which means you have a flat, smooth torque curve across the whole. It's why like when we were driving this truck, I can be doing 40 kilometers an hour and still spin the tires on that thing because it's just immediate torque. We really got to work on the programming of that. You, you get forward and reverse, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure every company driver should be allowed to spin the tires at 40, 50 kilometers an hour, but it is an option. <laughs> What we decided to do is we made this truck as easy to maintain as we could. When I was running my business there with logging trucks, we had five trucks and they were all from the 60s and 70s because I bought one new truck and in the six months I had that truck, it spent about two and a half, three months back at Kenworth with emissions issues. DPF, computer fault programs, to the point I finally said, just take the damn truck back. And we started rebuilding old trucks from the 60s and 70s, 80s. We just take the frame rails, rebuild them. I love the way that those old trucks were. Like that 1969 Kenworth we had, for the eight years we've been hauling logs, we kept track of the maintenance we put in parts. We're only $3,500 in parts on that truck for eight years of logging. Cause that thing was just a reliable workhorse. It never broke down. The parts were cheap. So we figured if we were gonna build our own truck, we were gonna build it the exact same way. We used common parts that were off the shelf, the same parts you would see in those 60s, 70s, 80s trucks, the ones you get at any part store for next to nothing. We used that and we built that. All the electrical components, like everyone thinks electric is scary, that electric, and the only reason it is is that when they build these new trucks and you look at Tesla, they use so many proprietary parts and they don't let you work on them. The truth is electric has been around for the last hundred years. You look at a sawmill, all the parts in a sawmill electric motors. There's industrial electricians. You go to any industrial electrical supply store, they'll sell you contactors, fuses, high voltage equipment. We just use those parts that are commonly available, took the electric motors, stuck it onto the front of an axle, use the same contactors. There's no reason that electric has to be this giant scary thing that can't be worked on. If you got an electrician that can work on a sawmill, he can work on one of these trucks. Like, yeah, there are a few things that are scary. There are batteries that can provide power and probably kill you if you handle it wrong. But it's no different than working in a sawmill that has three phase high voltage power. It's lock out, tag out when you service it. Other than that, it's really simple. You lock it out, you tag it out, you make sure that the power is disconnected, you work on it. Anyways, that's kind of, I leave some little room for questions here if anyone has some. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Jason. That was actually one of the presentations I was uh, especially looking forward to today. All right, so we just finished today. Everyone's kind of left. We're staying overnight in the hotel because I don't feel like driving back to Merritt. It's like an eight hour drive. And they were nice enough to pay for our hotel rooms, but we learned a few things. Like, I still got to work on my public speaking. I was incredibly nervous up there, if you couldn't tell in the video, but I think I got through it. A couple things did learn, got to figure out the slides, make sure the slides work, maybe bring our own laptop. Um, a lot of the videos, it was really cool slide presentation. Didn't always work, didn't translate, a lot of the files didn't open, so I'm thinking I'm make it a little bit more basic. I also went over a few things twice. I think I would more streamline a little bit more, maybe a few more pictures of the truck, less technical information on the slides, but some great things came out of today. Met some great contacts, met some logging contacts down here in Washington, talked to the Washington State DOT. They had some great contacts about bringing the truck into Washington. They're gonna connect us with. Really just met some great people, fantastic networking. It was a good day, it was well worth the trip. You know, I think I'd definitely be open to doing more of these kind of speeches, public speaking. I'd love to learn a little bit more. It's an area that I'm weak in. I feel like if I do it more, so if you want me to come down, I could do the same kind of deal. and get some more experience, talk about these things. I'd definitely be open to doing a lot more of this in the future. If you're interested, there's always the email for DTF at edisonmotors.com. That's the one to reach out about all kind of social media, kind of engagement stuff. I hope that worked with the hands. 
for showing the oh, name. Oh, and do the, if you guys want to check out the playlist, Topsy is right there.